So for the last few days, I played with the new tool by OpenAI called GPT Chat or ChatGPT. I always get that one wrong, like pretty much everyone on my Twitter timeline. And I not only used it to generate some new video ideas, I also used it to develop a whole application because I realized that this could be an incredibly powerful tool for software engineers like myself. And that's what I did. I wanted to create a simple blog website where I use markdown files. And I think this project made a lot of sense to me because it was kind of meta basically, because everything I did was AI generated. The blog posts itself were written by the AI, the logo and the header images were generated by Midjourney, which is another AI powered tool. And the software for the most part, I would say 95% of it was also written by the AI. This is what the final project looks like. I think it's pretty great considering it only took me about three hours to make all of this happen, including all the images, all the blog posts, all the code. And that's why all keeping in mind that I'm not a great, crazy, kick-ass senior developer. I'm just a junior developer, I would say. So let's get right in and see how this all plays out. Okay, so the first thing that I did was, of course, open chat.openai.com to start the chat, the chat GPT. And then I just wrote down what I want to build. I want to build a blog website in Next.js, which is the React framework that I use, that reads markdown files as blog posts. How would I do that? And I didn't really have any experience with markdown files until now, so I naturally really didn't know how I would build this. So this was a very straightforward question that I would usually type into Google, for example, but maybe write down a little bit differently. And this initial response was very impressive to me because not only did OpenAI tell me what I need to install, it also basically gave me what I need for the blog. It gave me a natural a, a blog page, an overview where, where you would list all the different posts, and then also a Slack page where all the different blog articles would appear. So for example, slash example blog post. And then if you click on this, then you land on the blog post with the title example blog post. So just with that, we were already 20% done. I installed the dependencies that it told me to install, configured my GitHub repository so that I can uh, push my stuff into that. I also really need that later on to host the app on Vercel, which connects to, to the GitHub repository to make my, um, to make my website available online because right now it's just on localhost so i can just run it locally um, i just followed what github told me to do I'm not really questioning anything here <laughs> it is just routine i've done this a hundred times but i don't really remember any of the commands because there's no need to do that it will just tell you what to type and i just copy paste it all the time and started the local development and this is what it looks like this is just the standard configuration for the standard next.js page that you would always um, start with then I went into OpenAI again, into the chat service and copied the code for the blog page and the Slack page. As you can see, the blog page is cut off at the end. It's not complete. I will fix that later on. There's like a limitation for the maximum amount of characters uh, that the chat will give you. I, I don't really know how it works. And I also created the Slack page, which is the page where an individual blog post would be hosted. Then I wanted to fix the problem that I had on the regular blog page where the code was not complete. So I was like, hey, continue with it. Continue with props, And it gave me the rest of the answer. This had a weird structure now though. It was kind of broken up. So I said, can you please give me the whole pages slash blog.js file? And it did exactly that, which was perfect. So I could just copy that, go into my file um, for me it was just index.js so i renamed it and i also knew i won't have a blog folder i will just host everything directly on slash slug so i removed the blog folder right here and now i had my file and i was curious if this would work basically just ran through the code in my mind very quickly and was like mm, okay this looks interesting it uses the uses the path module to get the markdown files from the post folder things like that but i, I didn't really double check if this would work i was just okay Give me an example blog post, give me the markdown of that post, I create that post in the post folder, and let's see if it runs. Here I also forgot <laughs> what the ending of markdown files is, it was like ms, msx, something like that. Nope, it's not. So I just asked the AI, give me the ending for markdown files, and it did that. It's .md, I think .mdx also works, uh, changed the ending, pasted in my markdown, and now I had an application, which wasn't running though. I got an error with the FS module. Um, as far as I know, FS only runs on the server side and in here I think it uses it on the client side, I'm not really sure. 
Um, Next.js of course, of course supports server-side rendering. And I just went with the functions that I'm familiar with, which, which is get static props and get static paths. Um, I told the AI to please do it that way. It gave me the code and it worked perfectly. And as you can see, now we have a very basic block. We have the overview page, which lists the different block files. And then if you click on that, you land on that specific file. So afterwards, I pushed everything to Vercel. So now we are also online and not just locally. And then I went back into OpenAI and told it that I want to use Tailwind for this application. Tailwind is like, um, I don't really know what you would call it. It's not really a framework. It's just, it's a way to write CSS a little differently, a little easier in my eyes, class-based, where you just add um, different properties in classes to your elements in the DOM. Um, and I use that a lot because I think it's very easy and I'm, I'm way faster with it. It also has an integrated style system already where it says uh, how, how big certain elements are and you also have colors integrated and stuff like that. But it gave me this installation and it was somewhat confusing. So I went into the doc documentation of Tailwind. This was the only time I used Google. <laughs> I only used Google to tell me, hey, give me the Tailwind website. I went on there, copied a lot of the stuff in there and then my Tailwind was finally running as well. Um, so yeah, sometimes you have to combine the two. I think that's just the learning I had myself. If if what you get as an answer is not really sufficient, maybe try a different source, maybe try Google, maybe try Stack Overflow and uh, just find a balance between all of those. And of course, also figure out things for yourself, try them out. Um, it's not like you will you will completely go away as a developer. It's just you need to find a balance between all these things. So here I did text orange 500 for the um, for this my first blog post and as you can see this worked so now we have Tailwind officially correctly installed and uh, can go to the next step which was to style this blog page because right now it just has a simple single line which is an a tag a link so I, I gave it the the blog that I already have the the HTML and told it can you make this look nice um, which is not really very precise of what I wanted I told the AI what the blog will be about, that it's about artificial intelligence and maybe you can take that into consideration when um, when styling the page. And it did that, I think, because it used a nice gradient, like a uh, violet um, gradient. But it didn't really look that great in my eyes. I don't know, I wasn't really happy with it. I even told it, <laughs> that's that's kind of ugly. Very, I don't know, very judgy here, but I don't know, I didn't I didn't really like it. Um, and I wasn't really specific about what I want. I just said, can you make this look nicer, more futuristic? And a learning that I have here is that this doesn't work. Um, you won't get good results from this and you will see why in a second. It just doesn't know what I want from it. Where image generation is very good at understanding what we find pleasing aesthetically, I think that's not really the case here. Um, here it's more like it understands structurally what's going on in your code and how to improve it as well. So what I did is I made a hero element. Hero is usually the top part of a landing page, for example, that maybe has like the, the catchy headline and the call to action. And now it already looks a little bit better. I have this button centered. The button looks a lot better. It's, it's blue is more fitting to the background. I still don't really like the background and we will change it later on. I also wanted to give this button some functionality. Um, instead of subscribe, there is nothing to subscribe to. I named it explore a random post because that made sense in my eyes to just open a random post that I have in the posts folder and of course I let the AI write this function open random post. This didn't really work initially because it didn't really take any of the posts from the post folder it just made a new array with some placeholder posts so that didn't work. I then told the AI that this is not what I want. Um, I want to get the post from my folder and then it uh, went on to write a new function where it uses the file system module again. And also this is not what I really wanted because you cannot use the FS module in that context here. So what I did is I tried it out myself for a little bit and then realized I can just simplify this by a lot by just adding the posts into the props of my hero. And then uh, that's pretty much all I needed to do. And this worked. So now if I click on the button that I want to get a random post, I would get a random post. I There was just no possibility for me to test it at that point because I only had one post in my folder. So next up was I told the AI to write a blog post about the origins of AI. 
Here it started and then somehow stopped like mid-sentence. Sometimes this happened, I don't really know why. Um, but if you then just say, please continue, then it will expand on it more. And here I just said, then return this post that you just created as an MD file. And um, that's how I, how I basically got my post. And um, yeah, now I also tried again to see if my function actually works and it does, but somehow along the way, the markdown interpreter broke. Um, at first, the example post was shown nicely and then not anymore. And the same is true for this uh, new post that I created. It's like it, it got interpreted differently and now it just shows one long paragraph and I had no idea why that was the case. And I also asked the AI about this and it also had pretty much no idea why, why this happened. It gave me a lot of different fixes on uh, how to deal with it, but none of them worked. Um, and the reason for that is that it was Tailwind's fault. Tailwind overrides some of the standard HTML classes and their CSS properties, for example, the headings. And so every headline was just displayed as a plain paragraph, which of course is not what I wanted. So I went back into OpenAI and told the chat that I want to create some basic headlines, um, give them a, a certain styling, maybe just come up with something that would work in a, in a styling system. And it came up with all these different headlines and that made the content look way better once again. I also did the same for the unordered list, ordered list and uh, A tags and paragraphs as well. So I just told it, oh, give me give me some 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 stuff here that would work, that would look that would look fine and give it some some properties that make it look like actual paragraphs, actual links uh, and actual list items. And now you can see the post looks much better. It still looks pretty boring because we just have this white background and that would have been the next step to figure out how to make this look nicer, get a layout for it. And that's um, something that I asked the chat to do for me. And here the result again was really good. It first of all imported a lot of different themes or whatever that is, I don't even know. And then I told it to not use any external libraries or other components so that I only get back Tailwind classes. And that's exactly what happened, which was great. Um, I just copied this whole code that it gave me, put it into my blog post in the Slack page, and it turned out really good in my eyes. Like this was pretty much first try, second try, let's say second try, because the first try was all these external stuff that I didn't really want to have in there. Um, but again, like for the second try to get to get a layout this, that looks this clean, I was very impressed by that. Then I went to create a simple nav bar with space for a logo on the left. Um, where if you click the logo, you go back to the home page. If you're on a, in, on on one of the sub blog pages, for example, and uh, this again worked quite well. Um, it somehow didn't really understand that I only want uh, want something on the left side. It put something on the left and on the right, but that's just that's just super easy to fix. I mean, you just change like two lines of the code, and it all worked out. And this is something where I think this is this is how this will all play out. At least for me, I will use the AI a lot to generate code, but in the end, it's still my task to configure the code to make it look better on the front end. And uh, I'm, I'm totally fine doing that. I didn't really like the color of the nav bar, so I changed that later on. But first of all, I wanted to get a logo for it to put on the left side. So I went into the OpenAI chat and made it describe what a logo for an AI block could look like. I then just copied some of the text that it returned that I think made sense. Um, into Midjourney and generated a few logos from that. In the end, the one I chose was probably one of the worst, honestly. Uh, I thought it looked cool at first, but then I realized when it's so small on the page, you, you don't really see what's going on there. And it just doesn't, doesn't work with the other vibe of the page at all. Um, but that was fine to me at that point. I just wanted to get something done quickly. And if I would have spent 10 more minutes here, I probably would have gotten a way better logo. And that that's true for pretty much everything on the page. It's just quick and dirty, get something done, ship something um, within the time constraint that I set for myself, which is like two to four hours. Um, and every additional hour would make this a lot better. Now I got a way better looking gradient for the background of the hero. Uh, which was also AI generated. And I also created these cards for the different blog posts that we will fill later on with um, interesting an inter interesting title image and the headline and date of the post is already in there. Here's the final logo that I went with. Again, I think it looks interesting because it's like a brain that's connected to two people or two AIs or an AI and a person. So I, I like the look of it, but it's just way too detailed and it would never work. Um, because it's just so small when you put it on a page. 
Here's a big step that we made and that is we made the whole page the gradient and not just the hero. I didn't need the AI for me to do that and I also gave the nav bar the same gradient and a border bottom in a nice purple violet color put the logo on the left and added the title an AI for an AI. And now our blog doesn't look as crappy anymore. I also applied the same gradient to the individual pages of each blog post, and then realized I want to make this look a little more interesting with a title image. So I went into the chat and said, describe what a title image for that certain blog post looked like. So I just copied the, the title of the blog post in there. It gave me a description of what the title image looked like. And now you already know the workflow. I take some of this information, put it into Midjourney and generate an image out of it. In the meantime, I made the AI write a short description for each blog post. Um, I could have just put the whole blog post in there and then make it summarize it or something like that. But I just went with give me the first 140 characters followed by dot dot dot. Um, and that's what I would just display on the cards of each blog post. Here's the image that we got from Midjourney for our first blog post. And here's how it looks like on the actual blog page. So the way this works is I gave this image the same name as the blog post itself, just with a PNG ending. And that means when I go to a blog page with the ending slash origins of AI, for example, the program knows, okay, I need to look for the file called origins of AI.png and put it onto this page. Then for the second and third blog post, I asked the AI what are interesting topics to write about for an AI blog. It gave me some good subjects and I just took two of them pretty randomly because I didn't really care what these blog posts would contain. And from here on, you also already know the workflow. I create an MD file for the blog post, put it in there, ask what a title image for such a post would look like, put that description into Midjourney to generate an image, and then paste the image into my images folder with the same name as the post. And that's how you would scale this to hundreds of blog posts easily. And with a little bit of tweaking, this is what the final page looks like. The gradient for the headline, an AI for an AI, or an AI for an AI, is also done by OpenAI, so I didn't do that myself, I just pasted it in. Um, same goes for the button gradient, which looks cool in my eyes. And yeah, pretty much everything you see on this page. Here you also see the other two images that were generated by Midjourney. I really like them, I think they look very fitting, especially the one on the left, looks really nice in my eyes. And if we open one of the posts, you can also see what it looks like right now using the explore a random post button or by clicking on any of the blog posts individually. And here you see it looks nice. I think it is a very clean looking layout. It also is perfectly optimized for mobile. The headings look great. The text looks great. And you still have to take into consideration that I didn't spend a lot of time building this. I was also impressed by the Lighthouse report, which That's it for this video. Load, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you took something out of um, it. SEO and so on. And we scored really well here. I would say if you can already code, there are a lot of opportunities to use this new technology. And if you can't code, this still holds true because you can ask the AI to do pretty much anything, to clarify code segments, to tell you how to get started with coding um, and just help you. It's, it's like a pure programmer and it's incredibly powerful. I really would say you need to play with this. You need to try it out for yourself. And maybe this is the new way to learn programming or at least one of the ways because what software engineers do a lot is Googling. And GPT Chat is better at being Google than Google is. At least that's my experience so far when it comes to software engineering and also to content generation or idea inspiration generation in general. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and also check out my main channel where I will talk about GPT Chat really soon too. Thank you for watching.